Ladies and gents, welcome back to another video. As you can see here, this desk is filled with old iPods, iPod Touches, and iPhones. That's because today we're going to be testing out Firewire, talking about when that was introduced, how it works, and which of these devices are compatible with Firewire. So right off the bat, here we have a Firewire charger and a USB charger. You can see the difference in size is quite apparent. We'll go ahead and show right here. These are the specs in terms of power output. Now here's where things get interesting. I'm sure you guys have seen a USB charger before, very common. What you probably haven't seen is a Firewire connection. So this was introduced back with the iPod Classic first gen, and this was how you had to charge it. So let me show you guys what a Firewire cable looks like. This is not an Apple cable, but it is a third party that I purchased the original Apple cables are actually very difficult to find. So this is Firewire 400. There was 800 introduced a little bit later, but the iPods use 400. This is how it looks on both ends. You can plug it in here and then connect it to an iPod. So that's what we're gonna do. And before we do that, I wanna show you guys something else. So I'm sure you've seen how these come off and you can connect an extension cable. That extension cable looks like this. Right here, you just, snap it in like that and boom you've got an extender on your charger now the firewire does the same thing but it's a little bit different so if we pop that off you can look down here notice how this has a little tooth on top and a tooth on bottom compare that to the usb one where it only has a little tooth on top that means that this connector here will only fit inside the usb version as you can tell that it slides together like that. It does not fit here on the Firewire because there is not an extra slot for that tooth to go in. There's only a room on the top there. There's no slit on the bottom. So it does not work. You have to have a special power extender here to work with an old Firewire brick. So the way we're gonna get around that is just by using an old fashioned extension cord. So just like this, go ahead and plug that in there and we have our power. So first up, we're gonna test this iPod Classic. This is a second gen 10 gig model. I don't have a first gen, still working on finding one of those, but I'll show you guys how this works. So we've got our Firewire cable. We're gonna connect that here like so. And then on our iPod, we've actually got a little latch or door up here at the top we're gonna open up like that. And these are really fragile because there's a little silicone membrane there. And these iPods are so old, so you really have to be careful with them. So we'll go ahead and plug that in the top there. And we got our Apple logo, the iPod is turning on. You'll notice there is no 30 pin connector on the bottom, which I'm sure you're so used to seeing on iPods. So the first and second gen iPod Classic does not have that 30 pin, only Firewire. That is how you charge and sync the iPod. So there we go, the iPod has booted. Just like that, you can see it is charging there in the top right corner. So second gen iPod charging just fine with Firewire. Now that's the only device I have that actually requires the Firewire connection on the iPod side. So next, I'm gonna bring your attention to a different kind of cable, and that is a Firewire to 30 pin. So this was introduced with the iPod Classic third gen, and the reason for that is because this iPod right here, classic third gen, does not have a Firewire port. Instead, it has a 30 pin that we're so familiar with, but you can only charge it using Firewire. So you plug this in here and keep in mind, Mac computers at the time did have a Firewire 400 port. So you could connect your Mac to the iPod that way. So we'll plug it in there and should see some power. And this guy is not turning on. We're gonna try to reset it. Not sure if this is gonna work. This actually has capacitive buttons, so there are no physical buttons on this iPod. It's just touch sensitive. But I think our third gen is not gonna work with that. But this is how you charge. You charge a third gen with Firewire. You can also sync it with Firewire, or you can sync it with USB, but you cannot charge it with USB. There's another YouTuber, Dank Pods. I'll leave his channel linked down below. He has a very good guide on iPod classics and how to charge them. 
So here we go. This is, I think this is an iPod with color display. It is EMC 2022. This is charging with FireWire. This one can charge with USB, but FireWire is quite a bit quicker. So there we go. This is, I think it's, it's either an iPod photo or iPod with color display, I forget. But this is a chunky boy. This is a 60 gig model. This might be the thickest Apple device ever, uh, besides like a MacBook or a computer or something like that. That is a thick boy, so that one works. Next up, we've got this. This is EMC 1995. This might be just a regular iPod fourth gen. Yeah, this one does not have a color display. That's charging with FireWire. Also able to charge with USB. I believe all the iPod classics charge with FireWire. This is EMC 2065, and this is charging with FireWire. You can see there. This one actually has a working battery. Next up, we've got this. I think this is a fifth gen iPod classic. This is EMC 2173, really hard to make it out there. But as you can see, this is turning on. I think this has a bad hard drive in it, but that's working with FireWire. Here we have an iPod classic. This is an 80 gig model. I think this is a sixth gen. Also charges with FireWire and USB. And last but not least, we have ourselves a 7th gen 160 gigabyte iPod Classic. So this is the newest iPod Classic and it does charge with FireWire. So every single iPod Classic is able to charge with FireWire, but they are not all able to charge with USB. And a little oddball here, iPod Mini. This one definitely charges with FireWire and it's turning on there. There are two generations of iPod Mini. They are very similar. They both charge with FireWire, and I believe they charge with USB. Now, here's where things get interesting. We have an assortment of iPod Nanos up here, first, second, third, fourth, fifth gen, as well as a first, second, and fourth gen iPod Touch, and a first, second, and third gen iPhone. So we're gonna see which of those charge with FireWire, because you may or may not realize some of these devices actually are able to charge with FireWire, and there are very few iOS devices that are capable of doing that. We'll start with the iPod Nanos. This is a first gen. There we go, turning on with our FireWire connector. That's actually really quick. These things boot so fast. All right, see you later. That thing actually has a working battery. Here's an iPod Nano second gen. This one turns on with FireWire as well. See how quickly this one boots. And there we go, second gen iPod Nano, FireWire is working. Third gen iPod Nano, one of my favorites, this was my first iPod ever. And this one turns on just fine with FireWire. This is an eight gig model, you could only get anything besides silver if you purchased that eight gig model for 200 bucks. Here's a fourth gen iPod Nano, this one does not work with FireWire. You can see we plug it in there, nothing happens. So the iPod Nano 4th Gen is where FireWire support stops for the iPod Nano lineup. And just for fun, we'll go ahead and test out a 5th Gen here. This has the larger display as well as the camera on the rear. Go ahead and connect that to FireWire and nothing is gonna happen. Does not work. All right, next up, we're gonna test out the iPod Touches. Here is a 1st Gen iPod Touch, as you can see there. Go ahead and give that a little swipe to unlock and we'll connect it to FireWire and it charges as you can see right there. So this one's running iOS 1, but iOS version does not matter. They all charge with FireWire. Here is a second gen iPod Touch. This one will go ahead and get connected. This should not work. Second gen iPod Touches do not work with FireWire. They require USB. And just for fun, we'll go ahead and plug in our fourth gen iPod Touch here. It's got the camera on the back, white bezel on the front. As we connect that to FireWire, you can see it says charging not supported with this accessory. So it is actually able to recognize FireWire and know that it does not work for that device. All right, and last but not least, we'll go ahead and test out our iPhones. Here is an original iPhone 2G, and I think this is running iOS 3. It's got some apps and games on there. Go ahead and give this a connection here to our FireWire cable and it charges. So this is the only iPhone that works with FireWire. First gen iPhone and the first gen iPod Touch are the only iOS devices capable of charging via FireWire. 
And just for completeness, here is an iPhone 3G, as you guys can see there. Go ahead and give that a plug here, and it is not, ooh, wait, it is charging. Did I misspeak? Does the 3G work with Firewire? Now I'm curious, we're gonna let that sit and boot because I did not think an iPhone 3G worked with Firewire. All right, and I guess I spoke a little soon. This thing does not support Firewire charging. We get that same message that we saw there on the iPod Touch 4th Gen. And we will go ahead and test out a 3GS and see if this turns on. It may turn on, but it's not gonna charge. And in fact, we get nothing there, so wait okay it's just telling us we need to charge it's not actually giving it power or was it was that receiving power it seems like it gets enough power to turn on and show the low battery symbol but then the second you unplug it it dies so maybe it's just got enough power to turn on the device but not enough to actually charge so you see it comes on but as soon as i unplug oh it stayed interesting so maybe these devices can get a little bit of power from Firewire, but not enough to actually make them work. But here is our iPod Touch first gen once again. Boom, charging. So that's pretty cool. So almost all of these devices are capable of charging with Firewire. All of the iPod Classics work. The first three iPod Nanos work. First gen iPod Touch and the iPhone 2G are able to charge using our Firewire connection right up here. Again, this thing looks quite a bit different and it is actually a pretty big power supply, much larger than even the 29 watt USB-C power adapter that shipped with the MacBook Airs. This thing is actually a little larger than that. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed this comprehensive look here at using Firewire to charge iPods and iPhones. What works, what doesn't. If you've got yourself an old iPod Classic and it won't turn on, see if you can get yourself one of these cables. It's a Firewire 230 pin, and a lot of times these older iPods need that little extra boost of power that Firewire is able to provide. And of course, if you've got yourself a first, second, or third gen iPod Classic, you have to have Firewire to charge these. They will not turn on, the batteries will not charge without Firewire. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it helpful. Leave me some comments down below. Did any of these surprise you? Did you guys know that an iPod Touch and an iPhone were able to charge off Firewire? Pretty cool stuff. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in another one of my videos.